What's up guys, J Rivers here and today I'm bringing you something new, something different. A couple of weeks ago I had this idea of creating series for my YouTube channel and the first series idea I got was recreating scenes from movies and TV shows using Photoshop and 3D. So without further ado, welcome to the first episode of... I seriously need to think of a better name. So the other day, I had just finished working and I wanted to have some me time, relax, chill, you know. So I just went to the couch and I was watching something on Netflix. It was an animation actually, I think the name was Jurassic park yeah i was watching this cartoon that's rated i think three plus <laughs> but it was good trust me there was this scene that just took my attention it didn't even last a second it was i think 0.5 of a second i i don't know but the scene was so good the composition the lighting everything was just so on point and it just hit me i was like hmm what if i try recreating this using photoshop and 3d so here I was looking at the computer, I was like, should I do it, should I not? And finally I said, you know what, let me do it. I got up, went to the computer, put on my headphones, launched DAS 3D, which is what I use for 3D, by the way. This is the scene I'm trying to recreate. I don't know if you guys can see it, but that's it. I don't know what about this, but this is just good. Now for DAS Studio. So I just loaded the male character, I had to find some clothes that would match the guy from the cartoon and I found some clothes that was actually perfect fit him and I started a pose. Luckily I had a pose that was almost the same as the character in the movie so that saved me some time. I had to adjust some body parts, the fingers, the legs, the everything from A to Z. Now it was time for the dinosaur, so I went to the Dad Studio store and I found this dino pack that actually I had doubts about but it worked out pretty great. So I just loaded, I don't know what type of dinosaur it was but I loaded a dinosaur inside and it was looking good. It was huge but I had to scale it down and I just duplicated the same dinosaur three times because in the, in the movie it was three dinosaurs against one guy. I think he was he lost the fight. I just loaded up these three dinosaurs, posed them in a way that I think was pretty good. I had to reposition them. That took some time, but I, I got it right and I really loved what I had. So the next thing to do was the camera. The camera was a really important part of this scene because it needed to look like a hero shot. The guy had to be behind against three dinosaurs. You know, it needs to be epic. So I did that and I liked what I had. So I just hit the render button and this actually took about 30 to 45 minutes to render if I remember. So with the render done, I had to find some background, some images that would fit the composite. So I just went to the stock websites that I know on Splash, you know, the usual ones. I just went to them and I found some pictures that were actually great. I was like, okay, it's time to start the composite. And by the way, if you are enjoying this video, don't forget to hit the like button. And if you haven't subscribed, please, what are you waiting for? Go subscribe. All right, now it was time for the real work, Photoshop. I loaded in the PNG rendered file and I had to cut all the subjects and put them on each layer, meaning the dinosaurs and the three dinosaurs and the guy had to be on a separate layer. So I did that. That was easy, easy to do. The reason for doing that was so I can just move the dinosaurs anywhere, replace everything in Photoshop to see what position fits the composition. I brought in the grass image, duplicated it about four times. So it fills the bottom side of the composition and I created a group, put them in the group and I started masking to make the grass perfect. I found an image that had some rocks and some grass that I thought was so perfect to blend with the grass I had already placed in Photoshop and also used the rocks from it 
So I did that and I cropped out the rocks from the image so I get them standalone in the composition. I imported some more images and I found this grass image that was really perfect to fill up the base and just make it look so real I think. So I just used that and the image was looking like this at this point. So here I was looking at the whole image, I was like something's missing. So yeah, I added more rocks. Positioned everything again. Now it was time to place the backgrounds in. I had this icy mountain looking image and I used the pen tool to just crop out. That was really something. <laughs> I don't use the pen tool often but in this case it was perfect. So I used the pen tool to crop out the icy mountain and I have something looking like this. Now for the skies, I wanted the whole image to have this sunset vibe, you know, because the original scene from the animation was sunset. I think it was around five, six o'clock. I, I, I don't know. And in order to have sunset, meaning you have to have some purple and some orange tint in the whole image, give some sun vibe and, you know, dark clouds. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. After the background was looking good, it was time to focus on the foreground again. So yes, I added more rocks. Just playing around with them, figuring out where this would go, where that would go. You know, it's just a try and error phase now. After that, I grouped all the rocks and I started blending them with the grass so it doesn't look like the rock is floating on the grass. Now it was time for the shadows. And in order to create shadows, you need to know where the light source is. And in this image, the light source was somewhere around the left side. So meaning the shadows are going to be on the right side. A basic, basic light theory. So I created a dark hue and saturation layer. And I started painting the shadows on the grass. After creating the shadows, the image was looking way better. I couldn't wait to finish it. But then it was time for the highlights. We already know the light source is coming from the left side. So I had to implement that. So in order to do that, I created two hue and saturation layers, one for global highlights and two for the edge highlights. I don't know how to call that one, but those ones are the highlights that are at the edges. And in order to make it better, it's all about masking, brushing, you know, painting where highlights are supposed to be and not painting where highlights are not supposed to be. Now the icy mountain was kind of distracting, so I had to take care of that. And in order to do so, I created a hue and saturation layer again. Now the image was looking good and for the highlights on the rocks, I just used the global highlight layer and it was looking perfect. For some actual depth, I had to create a blur. So in order to do that, I converted one of the rock layer to a smart object, applied a field blur to it to just a little to see how it looked and it was looking perfect so I just applied it to the rest of the rocks. This was looking pretty decent so I just added some particles, you know, what is a Photoshop artwork without particles? You need particles in your work. So now here I was looking at this image, then it hit me, oh no, <laughs> how is this man going to fight three dinosaurs without a weapon? How? So. You know, I had to go to Google and search for the classic dino weapon, which is their taser looking thing. In. I will put it on the screen right here. Thoreau, the man is not Superman. He's just a regular guy trying to save some kids. Go and watch it. Go and watch Jurassic World. So I found this perfect looking taser. I don't know how they call it, but I'm just going to stick with the dino taser. Dino taser? Dino taser. So I just placed it in the image and I maxed. Masked? Maxed? Masked? I masked? I masked? I masked his fingers around the taser so it looks like he was actually holding it. Then I just elongated the back to touch the grass because it was looking weird just hanging below his. So to actually sell the taser effect, you know, the zzz effect, I just looked for a lightning and placed it in there at the tip change the blend mode to screen and voila. After that, I just threw in some camera raw filter, some color grading adjustments and oh my God, this image was looking good. So let me know what you guys think. Did you like this video? Do you want more of this video? Subscribe if you haven't already. 
like this video share it to your friends you know the usual youtube and script stuff and i'll see you guys in the next video peace <laughs>